Welcome to the next lecture in form series. In the previous two lectures, we have covered creating an HTML form using simple HTTP response and how to create HTML form using Django templates. Now let's move ahead with Django forms. Let's get started with this now. For this, the very first step is that we need to create a separate file called forms.py because Django forms is a built-in feature and for this we have to create a separate forms.py file. Now within this we have to import import the forms module from Django. We will write from Django import. Then in order to create the fields we need a we need to create a class. Class with any name that you want. Let's say I'll be using input form. Input form. Now the parameter that has to be passed is the name of the class. So we have to use forms.form. Forms.form is a class from Django.forms module. Now, once you are inside this class, you have to specify the fields that you need within your form. The first one is name. For name, we can create a simple text box. So that's the reason we'll be using care field. We have to use care field for our first text box. Then we need email field for which we can use forms.email field. So we need to ensure there are no spelling mistakes. Okay, so the last one that we need is password. For password, we can use cat. Cat. So our, our class for creation of form is ready. For rendering this form, we need a template as well. But this time we don't have to mention all the text boxes within the template. Let's see how we can do it. So let's create another form with name form1.html inside the templates. Let's have the basic HTML template. I'll be simplifying by removing all this. You have to create the form tag and use the post method for your method attribute. Inside the form, you also need a submit button because we don't have a submit button inside forms.py as we cannot have it it's not a part of the field so input type equal to submit is definitely required so the value we are specifying is type a value equals to submit okay now what is the next part that we have to render this form for rendering the form we have to use interpolation that is double curly braces we have a method called as form dot as underscore tag name so right now I'm using a paragraph tag. What it means that your form fields will be rendered as a paragraph. Paragraph is a block level element. So each and every text box or the field will be visible in a new line. Right. But we are forgetting something that whenever we have to work with forms, we need a CSRF token. So before we receive any kind of CSRF error, let's include the template tags and write csrf underscore token. We are now ready to create our function. Let's come to views.py. So first of all, we have to import our forms.py. We have to use from dot forms, which refers to this forms.py file. Dot forms import the class. So the class that we use is input form. Next is now you have to create your function. So you can create the name of the function as let's say I'll be using, let it be form one and write down the quest parameter. Now you have to use that. You have to check that if request dot method, request dot method is a post method. If it's a post method, then Okay, now the line that we have to write here is form equals to input form and the parameter that we have to pass is request dot post. What we did here is we have created an instance of this input form for which the data should be submitted via the post method. Right. 
Now, next is that we have to check that if the form is valid, we have to use, we have a built-in of form dot, we have to use the form instance and use is underscore valid function. So, this is a built-in function when we work with Django forms. It will check if your form is valid, all the fields are filled correctly, then it's going to give you a positive response. So, what we need is we simply want to return return an HTTP response as form submitted successfully form submitted successfully right and uh, once your form is valid it has uh, returned your form submitted successfully we also need to render the form point is that if your form is not valid means all the fields are not filled properly or any field is left empty then you can make sure that your form is once again rendered because if there is an error uh, if your any field is uh, empty then it has to once again render the form and show the same form so we have to use render return render use request parameter and render the same form and that is form one dot html right and we have a third parameter now this time we also have to use a dictionary so we have to write form e and the value is form instance now once we are done with the form handling using the post method we have written the whole logic that what to do when you are clicking on the submit button but apart from this the very important thing we need is that when we go to the url for the very first time we are actually using a get method that time so at least we should be able to render the form for the very first time we go to the url so we have to use the get method either you use a separate condition using if request dot method as get or you can simply use the else part or don't do anything just simply you have to create another instance as form equals to input form no need to pass any parameter because by default now it will be a get method and just return your form using return render and first parameter will be i'm going to copy this from here so i'll be pasting this here Let's create a URL now, path and the URL that I'll be creating, let's consider the same name, uh, we'll be using form1, form1 as the URL and the function that we want to call is form1. So let's check for the errors. Okay, so we are getting one error here, actually when we have to write the care field, these care fields should be having f as capital okay let's check for the errors once again it's reloading right so okay so inside email field also we have to use f capital so it's again reloading So it should work at this point. Let's wait for some time. Right, so it's not showing any more errors. Let's follow this link. And we need to go to the URL form one. Nice, so our form has been rendered. If I click on the submit button, you see that it shows please fill in this field. Why it is showing we are not performing any validation inside the HTML form. Normally, this kind of thing will be visible when we are using the required attribute inside the, inside the uh, HTML form fields. But this is happening because of is valid function. So that built in Django function is trying to validate and hence is showing you this error that please fill in this field 
Right, so let's fill something. So I'll be, I have filled all these, uh, these two fields right now. If I click on submit button, you can see again it is showing an error in the password. Let me fill the password. If I write anything, let's say one, two, three, I click on submit. So we are getting form submitted successfully. So it means that it works. You can observe something here that password is being shown as a text. Uh, it's not hiding it using the asterisk symbol. So we have to make some changes. We apparently don't have anything like password field. We have to use cat field only, but we can use widgets. So I'll be using widget equal to forms dot password password input. So let's check for the functionality once again. I'll be re-rendering this. Okay, so we need to see that if there is any error, it's still loading. Okay, perfect. Let's check once again. Form is now rendered. Now, once I write down here, you can see that. Additionally, you can also use the max length function. Max length parameter you can use where you can specify that you need only these many characters. Let's say if I write here max length as 3. So let's check this one as well. It's loading. So we'll check for the result now. Let's see that if this thing works, we will re-render our form. So let me write a few characters. Let's say I'm going to write my name. But you see that now I'm actually typing, but it's not accommodating it because the maximum length height I have considered is 3 only. We have successfully implemented the basic functionality of Django Forms. Now, the next part that we are left with is model forms. Model form is also a great feature where we perform the linking between our model and the form. So we will be covering this once the models is covered. In the upcoming lecture, we will see that how we can perform form validation and how we can show the customized errors on the web page. That's all for this lecture.